Hey guys, what is going on and welcome back to another episode of the Huddersfield Town Career Mode. This is episode number 12 and today, oh my word, we have a massive episode with our terrorists because the January transfer window is opening today. Yes, get in. I love the transfer windows in career mode and I know you guys do as well, especially the January window. We can strengthen our team mid-season and make some major moves with our side. So the transfer window is opening today. I can't wait. So let's just get straight to it. Now, of course, in the last episode, you guys would have seen a triple header to end the calendar year and it was a frustrating episode for the most part and I have to say sorry as well for raging a little bit in the last episode you guys know I don't like to rage but I just I couldn't help it I was so annoyed uh, of course we lost the first game uh, two and away at St Mary's against Southampton which was a frustrating defeat but then followed that up with an even more frustrating game not a defeat but a draw which felt like a defeat home to Mark Hughes Stoke rock bottom at the table coming to us on Boxing Day we were two goals up with nine minutes to go and then Peter Crack Ouch. scored two late goals against our 17-year-old goalkeeper making his debut, which he could have done nothing about the goals, but I was livid. I was absolutely irate after that game, but we did respond with a massive win at home to Sean Dyches Burnley by three goals to one to end the calendar year strong, and we needed it as well. Our run of form had been very, very poor. Uh, so in today's episode, we've got the transfer window opening, of course, and two games at home, sorry, away from home at King Power Stadium against Craig Shakespeare's Leicester in the Premier League, and also our first ever FA Cup game with Huddersfield as well as we take on Spurs at home in the third round. Tough games, but hopefully you'll come through with the wins. Let's find out. Come on, Huddersfield. And so as we have now entered 2018, uh, it's New Year's Day. Sassuolo have just signed Aaron Lennon. What an interesting deal for the uh, for the Italians there as Lennon goes to Sassuolo. Brighton have just signed Andy Carroll. Some interesting deals already. Cedric going to Milan as well. The Saints, of course, in fine form this season. How would they deal without their right back? But of course, for us, we've already made two deals as well in the transfer window. My manager range comes to 80, I thought it was 85 a second ago. It's now 87. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we of course made two uh, moves during uh, the, uh, the, the the months outside the transfer window uh, and we sold two of our players and as the window now opens you can see confirmation they have left Dylan Cogill has gone to Corral Alexander and Jonathan Hogg of course has gone to Selhurst Park so totally fine with those sales also as well real briefly I'm so glad that EA have done that now you can now sell players outside the window and they can now leave in January it's, it's just a, a more realistic thing and also a useful monthly report to enter January as well now of course in the last episode you guys would have seen Keith Barr has been really putting in work and props to the Northern Irish scout because he's found some great talents Jay Hall looks like the standout as well 62 rated 75 94 potential central midfielder 75 curve on him already Long pass 67, short pass 68 already. Ball could up. Well, Keith Barr, mate, uh, you deserve more than your salary. What a fantastic youth talent he's picked up there. Owen Harrison, 15 years old, can't promote him yet. Hugh Kelly, 50 rate, not the best, but good potential. Ewan Cooper, 59 overall, six, uh, 76 94 potential. We've got some great CMs here uh, from Keith Barr. And uh, Will Davis, the scout future stars, potential is dropping now as well to 79 to 89. Not too happy about that, but the youth scout is putting in work. Fair play. But when should we? promote Jay Hall though. When should we promote Jay Hall? Let me know in the comment section down below and also uh, vote in the top right as well because he looks really, really good. I'm, I'm liking the look of this young man. And of course in the last episode as well, uh, I did ask you guys for some transfer suggestions. Uh, thank you for all the comments. I really appreciate it. Uh, we've, oh, our budget's gone up. Oh, because of the sales. Yeah, there we go. Um, uh, it, oh, that's why my manager rating went up as well because obviously you know, my budget's increased and that's one of our objectives too, to finish the season with £8.8 .8 million pounds in unspent allocated funds. That makes sense. There we go. But uh, in the last episode, I asked for transfer suggestions. Thank you for all the comments. I really appreciate it. I'm I'm still not sure what should we what we should do with our budget because we we can save the money, hit an objective which is quite important to the board, or we can splash the cash in January and try and improve our team. Or based on the success we've had of our youth scout right now, maybe not try and sign a new player. Maybe pick up another youth scout. And there's another oh, there's another five star five star right there in Ian Cavanagh. He's from the Republic of Ireland. Oh, should we buy another youth scout? Should we hire... Because I must say, I'm liking the, the youth scout so far. We've got from Northern Ireland. Should we hire another youth scout? Oh, I'm not sure. Nine million's a lot of money, and we could sign a decent player with that, or maybe two decent players with that, but i got to say, I'm liking the youth scouting. I'm liking the youth scouting a lot. Do you know what? 
I'm going to do it. Keith Barr has convinced me to bring in another youth scout because he's put us up some great players already, just like three months into his mission. And, and this guy's got five star five star. So I'm doing it. I'm picking up another youth scout. We are going to try and get the best academy we can with Huddersfield Town. So Keith Barr's got a mate, Ian Kavanagh, uh, south of the border, is coming in. And uh, hopefully he'll pick us up some more good players as well. Our youth academy needs to be the best it can be here. All right, guys. So first game today, it's Leicester away at the King Power Stadium. They are playing a 4-4-2 for this game under Craig Shakespeare. Very good team. Schmeichel in goal, back for a Fuchs, Dragovic, Maguire and Danny Simpson in midfield. Morales on the left, Mares on the right and Ibora and Ndidi in the middle. Up top together, the rapid duo of Jamie Vardy and Musa. So this is going to be a really tough team to stop. And as for our lineup, now I know we beat Burnley uh, in the last game, but that was just two days ago. And since then, it's been New Year's Eve. The boys have been partying, celebrating that win over Sean Dyche's men. And unfortunately, quite a lot of my players are a bit too tired and most likely hung over. So quite a few changes for this game, unfortunately. 4-2-3-1, no listening goal. Back for Avluva, Zanka, Shinla and Tommy Smith. Williams and Billing in the CDM area with Sister on the left, Kachunga on the right, Adam as the attacking midfielder and De Poita leading the line with Mounier on the bench as he's too tired. So first game, Leicester. Let's get the win. Here's Luva into the Great Dane and now Danny Williams holds it up and turns and finds the captain Tommy Smith and Ince, uh, sorry Kachunga even is through here and it is Kachunga, oh he's at the post, off the post by Kachunga then gets it back and he's crossed the flex off Harry Maguire and goes behind for a corner, I said Ince, Kachunga of course is starting this game off the woodwork, what a start that would have been, so half time, gotta say lads, poor first start, we had one chance through Kachunga at the post but other than that we've done nothing and, and neither of Leicester, it, it's been a real damp squid, is indeed he for Leicester, now finally Kevin Morales, and Morales into Musa, not the best of first touches but kept hold of the ball anyway, back Morales. towards the Belgian, and Morales inside the area, and still Kevin Morales, Good and support. still Morales, and still Morales, and that's a fine <laughs> save by Lussel, now Marty yeah, through towards Musa, and Musa out wide towards the Belgian, the Morales down this left hand side, difficult. and again the ex-Everton man is inside here, and I just don't want to bring him down inside the area, he finds Jamie Vardy, and Vardy fires in, and maybe I should have took him down, if you give Jamie Vardy some space in the penalty area, he's going to punish you. A statuesque celebration, and really it was statuesque defending from me there. I was all at sea, and Vardy punishes me. Morales cuts in from the left with a fake shot, gives it to Vardy, finds a bit of space, and that's all he needs. Fires it past Lussel, 1-0 Leicester, and they've gone in front. It's also 12 for the year now for Jamie Vardy. They should not be struggling as much as they are when Vardy's scoring that many goals, but... It's 1-0, Fox is going front. Such a shame as well, because they did nothing in the first half. No shots at all. Now two already on target, and they score with one. But the chance to respond is Adam could be through. Oh, yes, get in. Charlie Adam, with the instant reply, makes it 1-1 and puts us back on level terms. That was lovely. Quick little ball inside towards the Plata. Nice give and go, and fires it home into the bottom corner. What an inspired signing CA7 has been. Love this guy. So also the first in a Huddersfield shirt as well. He's got quite a few assists, mainly from set pieces. Now getting his first goal for the club. That was a lovely little give and go there with our man up top. Here's Jamie Vardy. Nice ball over the top to find Musa, who controls, takes around Luva, cuts inside. Mores. Oh, I don't believe it. Three quick fire goals here at the King Power Stadium. And the Algerian has made it 2 1. What a ball by Vardy. That was, by the way, to find Musa. Cuts inside, gives it to Mores, and he squeezes the ball in at the near post off the post. Mares and Vardy, key players in Leicester's title winning season back in 2015-2016 and they've combined to score two goals as they go back in front. Kante was in my opinion the main reason they won the title that season but those two big players of course as Adams on the ball, Dinks onto the back stick, chance here, oh wide of the post from Van Lepara, great chance, lovely ball to the back stick. That should be 2-2. Now billing through to Charlie Adam, who's been great today in the attacking midfield role. Finds Kachunga around Wes Morgan. It's spacing for Kachunga to whip in across. This needs to be a good delivery. In it goes to the centre. Van Lepara heads it in and makes amends. What a fantastic second half. The first half was so poor, but it's 2-2. And Van Lepara makes amends after missing a great chance just a moment ago by heading that one in. Kasper Schmeichel rooted to the spot. Header goes into the top corner. Lovely delivery. Great header. And we're back on level terms. What a fantastic contest. Corner for Leicester late on. Can they win this game as Morales drills one in? Williams gets it clear, but straight to Dragovic. And the centre half gives it back to the Belgian Morales. Nice little ball roll, drills one in. And Vardy makes it 3 2. And he has been sensational today. Unstoppable. 
3 2 to Leicester with three and a half minutes to go. Oh my word, what a second half this has been. Well, that is going to do it then. What a thrilling contest at the King Power Stadium. First half, absolutely nothing to report. Second half, action packed. The cliche is football's game of two halves, and it certainly was in this one. Leicester get the win though, 3 2, and a very disappointing defeat. I think it was a really balanced game as well. Leicester may have had three more shots, but we had more on target and more of the ball as well. They were just more clinical though, scored with every single shot on target. A very frustrating and tough loss. Uh, no surprises for a man of match. Jamie Vardy, who was just sensational, unstoppable, bagging a brace and playing so well. It was just too hard to stop. This isn't a prop. I genuinely need this, man. That was unbelievable. Where did that come from? First half, there was nothing. In the second half, it was so action-packed, I started sweating. All right, so frustrating to defeat that one. But uh, before we play the Spurs game in the FA Cup, there is another transfer offer for Joe Lolly. And this time it's from Northampton Town. Cobblers, no, really. Used that line already, but it's, it never gets old. Uh, Joe Lolly this time wanted by Northampton. I said, I think it was the last episode we had a bid for him. Um, that, that was like the fourth offer from, from Barnsley. It wasn't, that was the first offer. I was thinking of someone else. I can't remember who it was. I was thinking of someone else. But anyway, Northampton put in a bid. It's 70 grand less than the Barnsley bid. But we're still going to say yes, because we have no plans to use this guy. And I, I just want to see him leave. Go to six fields. Northampton's a nice place. Been there a few times. And also, just remembering, I forgot to ask you guys where we should send our youth scout out. I did say I'll be letting you guys uh, pick the uh, the countries we go ahead and scout you guys are you you guys are my chief scouts and I want you to make a decision where we send our scouts out so yeah in the comment section down below I think I've already asked you to comment a few things today but anyway in the comment section down below where should we send Ian Kavanagh what nation should he go to I mean there were some great choices in the uh, in the last one with Keith Barr you guys picked the right country though it seems of England but where should we send Ian Kavanagh too, because um, yeah, I, I, I want our academy to be the best it can be. So in the comment section down below, leave me a comment. Where should we send this youth scout to? Because I want our academy to be really diverse, but the best it can be. Where should Ian Kavanagh go? Let me know in the comment section down below. Please don't tell me transfer talks are broken down. Please don't tell me transfer talks are broken down. Please don't tell me transfer talks are broken down. Oh, this is really, really, really annoying me. Now, I know you guys have been letting me know it's not just a me problem. It's quite a common problem in this year's FIFA. But, oh, God, it is really, really frustrating. So, once again, Joe Lolly has declined to leave the club. But we don't want you, Joe. We don't want you in this team. Take a pay cut and leave our side. All right, guys. So, second and final game today. As we once again welcome Richo Pochettino's side back to the Kirkley Stadium. This time for an FA Cup game, though, as we have our first ever FA Cup game with our Terriers. It's the third round, and I made quite a few changes from our defeat to Leicester. Same formation, but a different lineup, including Sean Morris playing in goal for his second start for the team. Uh, the back for is Sessegnon, Tuanzevi, Zanka, and Tommy Smith with Moy and Billy in the DM area. Sisto on the left, Int on the right, Palm in the attacking mid, and Mounier up top on his own. And as for the Spurs team, well, it's a very good one. They beat us by two goals to nil earlier on in the campaign. Not fancy our chances coming into this one, especially after just three wins in our last 10 games. But hopefully we will get the Kirkley Stadium rocking and come through with the win. They've got Lloris in goal, back four of Rose, Alderweireld, Sanchez, Norier with Juan Yammer and Garcia in the DM area. Son's on the left, Lamella's on the right, Eriksen is the attacking midfielder, and Harry Kane, who did score a few months ago, is leading the line. So this will be a tough test. If nothing else, I'm hoping for a replay and a trip to Wembley. Let's find out what we do. Come on, Huddersfield. I want a nice cup run. Let's see if we can start here. Hey. Yama to Kane, trying to get around Zanka. And tries his luck from range. Oh, Sean Morris. Excellent save by the young goalkeeper there. Kane, he's one of those players who, when he gets a significant goal, he'll always try his luck. Really good effort. And that is a fabulous save from the 17-year-old. What a stop. You know, at first, I thought that just went wide from Kane there, fizzing wide the post, but instead, that was a brilliant stop from the young man. And Kane again going for goal. This time, Zanka blocks it, and Morris has a simple catch there. You know, against Stoke, he made one good save early, but other than that, couldn't stop anything. But that was a really, really impressive save there. As Sisto down the left cuts inside, and a chance here for us with Mounier running clear. It's Mounier, it's Mounier, it's Mounier! Oh, it's not a Reese this time with a good save. Ince turns and straight into Danny Rose. Both goalkeepers making impressive saves early. Still 0 0. What a stop by Lloris. Now, Aurier finding Son, and Son looking for space to shoot and oh is that a penalty 
I think it is. I think it is, and it is. It's a penalty for Spurs, and Tommy Smith is getting a telling off from the referee. No cards being brandished, but I tried to put Son off with a slide tackle. It was one of those moments where I'm not trying to make a tackle. I'm just trying to block a shot. He catches him. I mean, it's, it's, it, it is a penalty. Pochettino's appealing for it. He gets it. But, I mean, I'm not trying to bring him down. I'm just trying to block the shot. And Kane can make it 1-0. Morris has denied him once already. I'm not fancying his chances of making it 2 from 2. It's a slow run-up. And Kane pops it in. 1-0 Spurs. And they've gone in front. Well, they before the break. Still, we are trailing by one as Victor Wanyama plays it through to Lamella. And Lamella shoots from goal and scores. And makes it 2-0. Five minutes before the break. And I have to say, Sean Morris made a great save early, but I really think he should have stopped that one. It was at his near post. It's a nice strike, but I think he should have saved it. The Kenyan Wanyama playing it out wide. Lamella gets round Sessegnon and goes for goal. And I think Morris should have saved that one. I really do. It's 2-0 though. Spurs double their lead. And I think we're going out, not even before half time. Moy to Smith and Smith releases Ince and a chance here maybe is Ince finds Palmer and Casey Palmer is running through oh Lloris makes the save but Sisto fires in the rebound and makes it 2-1 what a time to strike just before the break half in the deficit game back on Palmer's shot really was straight at Lloris how on earth I put it straight out in there I don't know but Sisto is on hand to make amends 2-1 game back on come on Terriers don't throw in the towel don't give up what a great time to strike just before half time, halving that deficit, and with 45 minutes to go, there's still time well, plenty of time for us to get back in this game. Sisto bailing us out. Come on, Huddersfield, we're not done yet. Good interception by Billy, and now through to Palmer. Chance here. If I can release Mounier, who could be through. It is Mounier, it is Mounier, it is Mounier. Yes, get in seven minutes after the break, and Mounier puts us back on level terms as we battle back from two goals down and go into the stands to make it 2 2. Oh, fantastic. You know, I've got to say as well, that was not a good goal from Lloris. That was not a good goalkeeper at all. Mounier played forward. Does want to take it around the covering defender Sanchez, but that's underneath the Frenchman's body. He should have saved that, but we don't care. 2-2. Two -two. What a response. Free kick for Spurs in a very dangerous area. 25 minutes to go. Alderweireld standing over it. And I think he's going to go for goal. And he does, but Morris watches it every step of the way. Well done, Sean. Catches it well. And he'll dribble out of his area as we are still tied at 2-2. Two, two. We we could have given up at 2-0. You know, what a response from the Terriers. We could have given up at 2-0. We didn't. We stayed in the game. We kept our heads up and we've got what we deserve. Can we now find a third goal? Ince on the ball. Trying to get past Sanchez. In Side the area. Oh, Lloris with the save. Lloris with the save. We'll drop to Palmer. Palmer. Billing. Oh, over the bar. Come on, Huddersfield. Nice. Come on, come on, come on. Let's not throw this away. We've done well to get back on level terms. Let's not let Spurs win it late on and dump us out of the cup. Let's do to them what they're trying to do to us and get through to that fourth round. Smith on the ball, giving it to Moy towards Williams, just off the bench here. And Mounier could be through there if he gets around his man. He's still on the ball, holds it up well. Back to Williams. Williams now sees Moy in space, finds the Australian. And it's Moy, and it's Moy, and it's Palmer, and it's Casey Palmer! Oh, Lloris! With an amazing save! Tell you what, man, we have been fantastic in the second half. Absolutely brilliant. We deserve a third goal. We deserve to win this game. But as things stand, it's Spurs who are looking more threatening. As Son could be through. It's Son, it's Son, it's Young Min Son. Two hands be blocked in. He gets it back and finds Kane! Who puts it in with three minutes to go. And it's heartbreak for the Terriers. We did so well to battle back. But Kane is the villain as he bags a brace and sends Spurs into the fourth round. Heartbreak. Absolute heartbreak. Absolute heartbreak. I mean, honestly, we've we've played so well in this second half. We were defending for dear life. To Anzu blocks the shot, but he goes straight to Kane, who strokes it home. 3-2. And I think that's going to do it then. We've, we've given everything in this game. We've done so well. But I think that's going to do it. Spurs go through, surely. And we are going out. Unless Kachunga. Oh, my God. Lloris. How are you doing this? I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Corner. Moy to take it. In it goes. Mooney up. You get son. Off the post. Off the post. This is so unfair. Lamella, Kane, this is going to be it. Kane through. Oh, great save by Sean Morris. The nice Harry Kane from getting his hat trick. But it's not going to matter. 3-2 will be the final score. Spurs are going to get the win. And they are through to the fourth round of the FA Cup. 
It's absolute heartbreak. It's absolute heartbreak. I'm gutted. I'm absolutely gutted. We fought back. We did everything. But Lloris was just unbelievable. Spurs are through. And we're out. I'm gutted. Back-to-back -back losses by three goals to two. And when you look at these stats here, I'm, I'm, I'm gutted, man. We played better than Spurs, in my opinion. I mean, to be fair, it was quite a balanced game. I think we were just slightly better than Spurs. But, I mean, both goalkeepers are inspired for them. Made some fantastic saves. But Lloris was just unbelievable. And that's why, even though he conceded two, even though Kane scored two, in my opinion, it has to go to Lloris. Because some of the saves he made down the stretch were literally extraordinary. That, that stop right at the end to deny Mounier from point-blank range was just quite unbelievable. And, of course, we hit a post as well from a corner. I, I'm, I'm just gutted. I'm absolutely gutted. We are out of the FA Cup. Spurs dump us out in the third round. Once again, we exit the competition at the first round of entering. And it means now we can focus all of our time in the Premier League. But there is no cup run for Huddersfield this year in either the Carabao Cup or the FA Cup. And I am absolutely gutted. That, that is heartbreak. That is absolute heartbreak. But that will end today's episode of the Huddersfield Town Career Mode, guys. So a big thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy today's episode, then please do consider leaving a like, as likes are, of course, very much appreciated. And they really help the channel out as well. Uh, we shall return in the very next episode. And hopefully, we'll make some signings as well. So look forward to that one. But have a fantastic weekend, guys. Much love to you all. What a game. But sadly, we are out. And I'll see you for the next episode very soon, where hopefully... We'll get back to winning ways. I'm gutted. I'm absolutely gutted. We were so close. So close. But just not enough.